Is nuclear energy the right mix for South Africa's constrained electricity grid at the moment? Today we are joined by environmentalist consultant Kevin James, who's the chief strategist from GCX Africa. So Kevin, nuclear energy, they want to put in something like 9,600 uh, megawatts into South Africa's grid by starting in 2023. Is this the right way to go? And if not, why not? Matthew, thank you. Um, so, in my opinion, I think that um, the merits and demerits of whether nuclear is the appropriate form of energy for our energy mix, given the current trajectory that this country is on economically, I think that's one of the questions that need to be raised, and I'll address that one right now. Um, the situation as follows is that the government has quite conveniently latched onto a report or a study that was done in, back in 2007 called the Integrated Resource Plan, which was developed in conjunction with something called the Long-Term Litigation uh, uh, Scenarios for South Africa by the University of Cape Town's Energy Research Council. Um, back then, it was prior to 2008, which as we all know was the global economic meltdown of which South Africa suffered as a consequence. Um, the trajectory back then economically was that we were on a much more, much steeper economic growth trajectory. Okay, subsequently there's been another study, a follow-on to that report uh, by the same people who have come back and said we don't need that kind of installed capacity. The trajectory is such that our economic activity is now much flatter, which means that our demand for electricity is not going to be as it was in the first report. Uh, for some reason, the government has uh, conveniently ignored the second report and they've latched onto the first report and they're saying that this is what we require. Now, against the backdrop of, I suppose, rolling blackouts in South Africa um, and the load shedding that we've all experienced and we've all been victims in terms of the inconvenience, yes, that's been another driver that government has used to motivate why we need to do this. But we all know that this is not the fastest path to installing capacity in South Africa. We know that uh, nuclear procurement and uh, nuclear power generation has got a huge and long lead time and is steeped in budget overruns, time overruns. So realistically, we're not going to see any of this capacity installed before 2030 um, at best. So um, I think as a solution to our energy crisis and uh, as a solution to providing us with uh, sufficient installed capacity, base load, 24 by 7 energy power generation, I do not think that this is actually what we require right now. We have, uh, through the last couple of years, since uh, 2011, since the beginning of the Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Program, uh, where independent power producers have been called on to provide renewable energy, you know, uh, wind energy, solar energy, CSP energy, and biomass energy. This has been extremely successful. In fact, we're the darlings of the world when it comes to renewable energy. Yes, admittedly off a very low base, but what we've seen is four, four and a half, five rounds now in this program, which have delivered uh, a very cost-effective uh, electricity generation. And if we look at the price, which is something we need to factor in as well, wind energy, solar energy. Solar energy is the same price as coal-fired power right now. Wind energy is probably about 20% cheaper. And we're talking about nuclear energy. When it finally gets built in present value is probably about 20% uh, or 25% more than what coal and solar power is right now. So what's looking at, we don't need the capacity. The pricing is uh, at, at, at best uh, um, right now more expensive when I say at best, but actually at worst it's actually we can't even determine what that is. And that's just the build. That's not even talking about the decommissioning of nuclear power in 40 to 50 years time when the, the age of these power stations has to actually be terminated.